Hi and welcome to Crossfader. My name is Jamie Hartley and this is a special review episode today because we have Joe here from Audio Technica. Now it was quite funny, Audio Technica is actually a company that's based, their headquarters is based in Leeds which is just around the corner from our studio right here so it was fitting to get Joe to come down um, and showcase this new Allen & Heath Zone 96 mixer. Now this is a bit different to the reviews that we will be that you're used to on this channel because we, we we review a lot of controllers and a lot of entry level stuff. But this is the first time we've really dived into a mixer and something that is as powerful as this, and it's a bit more high end. I mean, you're going to be spending a bit more money on something like this than some of these entry level controllers, and it's a bit more of a pro piece of equipment. It's something that you might find in clubs. Allen & Heath mixers are quite common in certain venues and clubs. They're known so much for their sound quality and this boasts just that, an amazing sound quality as well as much, much more. Now, Joe, if you could just let everyone know what this retails at in the UK currently. Yeah. It's been out for a couple of months. Yes, yeah. Yep, so what does it retail at in the uh, UK? 1,599 pounds. Okay. The people watching might know Alan Heath for, for artists such as Nina Kravitz or yeah. Jamie Jones or Eats Everything is currently using this mixer. Um, and there might be people watching this video that look up to DJs like that and think, how do I get to that sort of level? What kind of setup do I need to be thinking about working towards? Um, and this video is hopefully going to break down some of those barriers if you're just a DJ that's sat at home on um, a basic entry level tractor controller for example but are aiming towards becoming the artist level of someone like Nina Kravitz or Eats Everything like I just mentioned we need to kind of understand the process and end up at this point now could you maybe explain to our audience what Allen and Heath is yeah. why it's so synonymous in that area in the industry in that scene in the industry and maybe talk about some of the technical features before we actually get into the tutorial side and the demo of this just why is this so powerful and why is it so popular with those kind of artists and DJs yeah absolutely um, so Allen Heath as you know is a British company uh, started off by doing uh, mixers for the likes of Pink Floyd, if you're old enough to remember them, I'm too old. Um, so, um, and that converted into making DJ products. So they used all the wealth and knowledge about um, those larger desks, those studio desks, and uh, they started making touring desks. So uh, uh, many a concert or festival this summer, you'll find that the front of house, um, which is where the engineers monitor and what have you, is powered by Allen & Heath. And all that technology uh, and knowledge has gone into making DJ products and really culminated into the 96 that we see here. Um, now the transition from, say, a, a Traxxer S4 to one of these isn't as complicated as it looks. It, it, I mean, for anyone sort of not really that experienced or um, has really delved into this side of things, you might look at 96 or, or uh, many other Allen Heath mixers and think, oh my God, this is, wow, there's so much going on here. But and it, it looks that way, but yeah. we're gonna break down today and really show how simple it is to get your head around. Yeah, yeah. I think one point to really make before we really get started with it is that you're approaching DJ sets in, 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 a, in a way that you have the versatility to, to really link up lots of different, whether it be effects units, whether it be you're a turntable DJ I want to play on, um, players with USB, you've got that versatility there to create a real unique setup that's just for you rather than have to just work on a basic mixer and some players you really want to think about your sets in in a much broader sense yeah. and this is where this mixer really sits in the market from my point of view and where i think it stands the test of time as well from their other products and, yeah. and why we see them so popular with some of those artists that you probably follow and, and look up to yeah joe is about to deep dive into all of the features that the zone 96 have how to set up the effects and just some of those key features that are featured on this mixer Remember to always like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos like this. And let's take a closer look.
Okay, so Joe, we've got the zone 96 here in front of us. Now, for our audience, I want to take a bit of a deep dive into the features that are available here and, and what this mix is capable of, and also a bit of a tutorial on how to use some of those features. But first, could you give our audience a bit of an overview on some of those real basic things that you'll find on all mixers and why they're so special on this mixer, such as your EQs and your faders? Yeah. Um, so this is an evolution of the 92 um, it's an analog mixer so the point of that is that it gives a richer sound um, as opposed to some digital mixers out there so and he for a world renowned for sound quality and this just highlights that um, as you can see it's a simple four channel mixer you have two additional um, channels but we'll come to those in a bit now, don't be daunted. It has got a four band EQ, but that is there for you to be creative with. And this mixer can be as easy for you to use in its simplicity or as complicated for you to use. And again, that's pretty simple. It just depends on how confident you feel and um, what kind of approach and result that you want out of it. So like you said, it's a very adaptable mixer and you can use it in a very simple way, just with your normal channels and EQs like you would any other mixer, but it's got a lot of connectivity options here. So no matter what setup you decide to use, there are lots of different ways you could use this mixer in, in live setups, in just basic DJ performances. Could you just give an overview of what can we connect into this mixer? How can we use this mixer in different ways for different setups? Yeah, absolutely. Um... So if you're a, a turntablist, a vinyl junkie, this has all the connectivity you want. Um, it'll allow you to connect four turntables if you want to go down that route, which is like absolutely crazy that you can do that. Um, if you're a, a, a media player, so you use uh, USB sticks or hard drives, um, you can plug into this in all, to, in all four channels, just like you can with the turntables and uh, be able to play to your heart's content. Um, if you like this, the style of live DJing where you can connect things like an Ableton Push or Tractor or Machina, what, whatever you want to do, it, this mixer gives you the flexibility to do that. If you want to plug in uh, Legacy Roland 808, TR8, whatever you want to plug in, you can into this and it's got all the connections that you could ask for and it, it just gives you that flexibility to be as creative as you want to be. So now that we understand the connectivity of this mixer, I want to just go through what we've got set up today and just show how we've got turntables plugged in, we've got tractor setup plugged in, how you can switch between the two and also then how to start applying effects to these channels and how that really works with this mixer. So if you could demonstrate just with some audio and we can flick between these different channels and then start applying effects, that would be, that'd be a great yeah, demonstration. That's, that's cool. Um, so on channel two, I have some vinyl playing and there you go, you can hear that, great track. So if I wanted to switch to Tractor, it's great out of the connectivity, I have the USB connected to my computer and in order to switch, it's really simple. I just turn this knob here and that switch to the tractor, uh, Decay. And I'm gonna switch it back to uh, the turntable and I'm gonna show you how, or what we've got connected. So I've got a Technics connected here into this. Obviously Tractor's connected into this and I've also got an Eventide H9 guitar pedal um, and the reason why I've got a guitar pedal, it just shows you how versatile this is. So there's some DJ effects units out there, uh, made by Korg, made by Pioneer, but it, this shows that you can be creative and there's a number of DJs out there that use this particular unit uh, and yeah, so it's really cool. I've just bypassed the audio, so at the minute, channel A here, this will run the effect. So that's my return and just up there on line two I have my send so I can control how much or how little effect I want on there. So I'm going to have that to 12 o'clock 
and I'm going to turn the channel up on A and then run the audio. So at the minute, let's see what we're running. Oh, it's a delay. So there we go. It's easy to manipulate how that works. And I'm just going to run that. So it's now showing as active. And that's how I turn that down. So you can hear the delay of the effects there working and that's on vinyl. That's, so it just shows you there. I'm just gonna switch this now to tractor and let's change the effect. So I'm gonna use this delay. And it's literally that simple. There's nothing to it. So it just gives you that dramatic effect. This, I re highly recommend this to anyone because it has got a wealth of effects, just the standard, and it allows you to create the sound that you want to do, to be as creative as you want to be, um, to set yourself aside from any other DJ just playing tracks. I think that's a really good point, and that's something I we always want to reiterate on our channel is just how creative you can be with different bits of equipment. Now, talking about creativity, there's an extra feature here. We've got the um, parametric EQ, so you can actually do even more with the effects, and you can change and manipulate how the effects sound um, within the mixer itself. Yeah. So if you just want to demonstrate what that is and explain really what that does, because that's a, a really interesting feature there that's been added, and this works with the both send and returns, doesn't it? Yes, so you it does, can use yeah. it on a microphone or on the effects. So yeah, if you want to demonstrate on the effects, that'd yeah, be great. Absolutely. So I have a mic running into B here. So I'm just going to demonstrate this um, first with the microphone. So this section here, so is your parametric EQ. I'm just going to cut the mid range out there. And I'm going to tune the frequency. So now it's given me a bit more bottom end. I really don't need that because my voice is horrible. <laughs> so I'm going to tweak that now. So it's given me a bit of more crisper top end. And I'm able to just hone that in a bit to give a bit more of a rounded sound. I really hate my voice. But this, I will say that this makes that a little bit better um, so let's run some audio through it now I'm able to so you can hear the rumble there of the low end and it just gives just that bit of richness and it, again it means that you can Rather than using a, a separate effects unit that will just give you those effects with very little control over tone and um, sculpture of the sound, this gives you that facility built into the mixer without having to buy a separate unit in order to be able to do that. So if you could just, moving on from the send and return effects, yeah. we've got the classic filters as well. Just Ooh, give yes. a really brief overview of the HPF. BPF and LPF for anyone that hasn't used an Alan Heath Zone mixer before, how these filters work um, and just how they assign to the channels yeah. and everything else. Yeah. So, um, with filtering, you generally have uh, different models. So, HPF means high pass, BPF means band pass, and LPF means low pass. And with the 96 here, we've re-sculptured the filter from the 92 and improved it somewhat. So it now sounds really, really tight, really good. Uh, just to add to that, we also have resonance. So you're able to, well, let me demonstrate it really. So at the minute, I've got that vinyl plane and I'm just gonna run so that's your high pass there. 
So I'm just gonna we go from wild, uh, mild, sorry, to wild uh, on the resonance, and I'm just gonna increase that, and you can hear some really cool resonance. Just run you through band pass. So band pass is the the center notch in the sound. So there we go. So at twelve o'clock. And there you go. It sweeps, yeah. Low pass, really simple. There we go. So on the left hand side, and this confuses people a little at times, but it's because we're allowing the low frequency to pass through. So we're killing off the high frequency. When you sweep it to the right, it allows the full frequency range to come through. And also, I'm going to switch this back to high pass. So now, what sets this aside from 92 is we've added this, which is a crunch, which is a harmonic distortion. So it's going to work quite apt with this. And it just gives a bit of grit. So you should be able to hear that. So with the 96, we have a dual queuing system. So as well as two USBs, which make changeovers or playing back to back um, really easy, you can now dual queue. You have your master here for monitoring, and this is your secondary here. And uh, you can also, if you happen to forget your jack, and I, I know a lot of people that do, there's a 3.5 port right there there we go, in order for you to carry on playing so you don't have to worry about that. The same with the, the master, 3.5 there or 6.3 here. And you're able to monitor here. You've got your split cue there. You can listen post EQ and hit a cue there. It will also tell you when the cue is active on this. There was another thing that you mentioned to me earlier about um, there's now a new setting where you, it doesn't switch like the old zone, um, the, the zone 92, sorry, where it doesn't switch automatically to the other queue when you activate it. Yeah. And you can change those settings on and off. Do you want to just show that little trick there? Yeah. It's really nice to be able to change that setting. Yeah, absolutely. So let's run some audio. So if you come to, to play after someone else who's playing, um, the most irritating thing uh, before was having to change over and you have to have your settings how you want it. But now we have built in some firmware. Even though this is analog, it still has a digital aspect to it. You just saw the two MIDI lights flash in there. We're now able to have the classic Allen Heath 92 set up with cues so they don't latch but if you wanted to you can actually press them down together and they will latch um, or now you can have it there we go and your standard latching way um, so that you can monitor all four or all six uh, channels at once if you want to do that really easy just engage and disengage just that simple nice and talking about setups and, and having the mixer set up to your preference moving on to the booth monitor you yeah. can actually change how the booth sounds in clubs because everyone likes maybe to have more low end or more mids or more yeah. highs and you've actually added that to the mixer now so if you just want to quickly explain that as well yeah absolutely so the booth now as well as having your 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 master volume uh, you have a three band EQ and you can also have it either in stereo or in mono just by hitting the switch there. It's 
just that simple. You can also mute the, mute the booth if you want to, just there. Everything is to hand, really nice and easy. And a few more personalization options here with the faders and the cross fader. I think this is something, again, that's been added onto this mixer. Yeah, that's right. Um, so one of the, the gripes um, for 92 was that when having uh, your line fader, it used to sort of be either loud or quiet. Um, so now we've added a, a line fader curve, so it allows you to be, again, it allows you to adjust the mixer how you want to, so that's a linear um, fader. This is more of your traditional Allen Heath, and again, to allow you to, just to have the mixer how you want to so you're comfortable with it and don't have to sort of worry give yourself a headache about that um, and the cross fader so now this has got a mini inner fader built into it that's adjustable not only do we have the cross fader curve there but you can actually adjust the cut so if you're a scratch DJ or you want to just have a, just a bit more flexibility with the fader, you can do. It's really that simple. Um, here's your standard fade. You've got your gradual curve. And then we have a cut option. And you, you can literally tune that so that you've got four mil I think the spec is and it just allows you to just if you want to scratch with it you can do it, it gives you that flexibility so as you can see this is a really powerful piece of equipment that you can do so much with and set up in so many ways now I hope this is maybe where your appetite towards what Alan and Heath has to offer now I just want to make it clear at this point that Joe's taking his time out of his day we're not getting paid for this video. This is for us to share the knowledge and to share this information with you, the audience, to help you make those better purchasing decisions and maybe get you thinking about the different avenues that are available to you as a DJ and as a creative and how you want to showcase your creativity and your skills. This isn't the mixer for everyone, but some people hopefully might be watching this video and might think, you know what, this is exactly the road that I want to go down. Now, I really want to thank Joe for coming out today and just really showing us what this mix is capable of. Um, I'd love to know in the comments if you've got any questions about it and we'll do our best to answer. What do you think about this mixer? Let Alan and Heath know, give your feedback. You know, it's really valuable to post those comments below and to share what you think about the products that are currently on the market. Now, just a quick reminder, yeah. how much is this product again? 1,599. And obviously it's British made, so how is it doing with distribution? I think you mentioned earlier that it's been such a popular release that, that you know, that Alan and Heath are, are trying to make as many as possible. Yeah. Um, how's it coping worldwide? Did, are we expecting, so we've got a worldwide audience here. Yeah, yeah. You know, could other places be, other countries be waiting a bit longer, obviously, than um, the UK? Uh, yes, uh, however, there's stock flying in, um, uh, obviously flying out all the time, so, um, if you haven't, if you're interested in it and you haven't uh, got it reserved uh, or back ordered, please do um, visit your local retailer worldwide. Um, speak to a distributor if you get the opportunity to, if you haven't got any local dealers, depending on where you are around the world. But yeah, units are flying out all the time and um, you won't regret it. It's like we said, it, it's a way to progress. It's something to look forward to, something to look up to, but you won't regret it because it doesn't matter what style of DJ you are, this is well equipped to cope with whatever you throw at it. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for watching. Thank Please you. remember to do all that good stuff, like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in another video like this very soon. Bye.